Okay, welcome to the final lectures. Oh, these, these are not actually lectures. We're going to go through some examples and my own experience on, on e-business and tourism. What, what are we discussing now uh, in, in tourism research? Um, and, and especially in online online marketing for, for half an hour or so. And I would like to start this with this fantastic video of, uh, that Finnar has made, uh, which lets us to get to know Barcelona, Barcelona in virtual reality. Or maybe not. Okay, the browser, my Mozilla does not... It was a 360-degree video, so basically there was a drone flying over Barcelona and you could look wherever you wanted. And it would, uh, it's really nice. And if you are looking at that video with your mobile devices, you can just turn your device anywhere you want to look. And it looks really amazing. And these kind of things are coming now and, and this actually combines many different things that we are talking about here now. Inspiration, new technologies, drones, 360 degree videos that work the best with mobile devices, uh, uploaded to Facebook. It has 65 shares, 157,000 uh, viewed um, times it has been viewed. But of course, for example, when looking at uh, Facebook, Facebook views on videos, you have to be really careful because it is for sure that 157,000 people have not watched that video from start to end. <clears throat> Facebook is not exactly open about based on what the view counts. Uh, on, on what the view counts are based, but they, there's many uh, different studies on the internet that show that not that many people are, are looking at, at these videos as the view counts would, would just suggest. And of course, it's not the amount of video views that Finner is looking, but it's about how many people get so inspired about this video that they click this link which takes us to flight uh, offers that they have. Oh, only 11 days left. Great. Uh, with, we discussed in e-commerce about online travel agencies, uh, which are, uh, which are marketing and sales channels for various kinds of businesses. There's one online travel agency, basically, it doesn't matter what kind of tourism services or products you are selling, there is some service that can sell your products. For hotels, it's hotelsandbooking.com. Uh, for flights, it's typically the own airline websites, um, or Skyscanner, for example. Uh, for experiences, for activities, it's Viator or, uh, or book your, getyourguide.com or something like that. And Google, Google's role in all of this is a huge question mark. Uh, Google is making a lot of money with Expedia and booking.com and holders.com. They are spending billions billions and billions of dollars, more than 10 billion, probably somewhere around 14 billion uh, dollars every year on Google services. So if Google would start their own service that would compete with these existing services, it would basically just be eating its own uh, pie 
So they, Google has been really careful not to step on the toes of, of let's say, their partners, their trusted... Uh, this is Ashley. She's going on a trip. Companies. A trip she started planning a while back. But, but right now, really feels kind of rushed. 11 hours later, this isn't her hotel. And with no Wi-Fi and no data, she's okay. Because Ashley already downloaded Google Trips. So no Wi-Fi? No problem. She has everything she needs to know about her vacation right here on her phone. Including how to find her hotel. That's more like it. And now that she's here, working out what to do doesn't need to be quite so... Overwhelming. Because with Google Trips, Ashley can make her own personalized itinerary for each day with all her must-see spots laid out on a map to help get her there. And now that she can plan in advance the travel time to each location, she doesn't need to let any opportunity pass her by. All that sightseeing is hungry work. Hang on a second. Ashley, remember that place you saved that your friend Jane recommended? Yep, this one. Right around the corner. Known for being Picasso's old stomping ground. So wherever Ashley goes on vacation, Google Trips will always give her everything she needs, right at her fingertips. Nice work, Ashley. So this, this is definitely a space that we need to this is keep an eye on at this moment. What is Google doing regarding travel and tourism? It's a huge question that I've asked their personnel several times, but they are always uh, going around with their answers. And, and I, I'm not sure even if they know what they are doing with travel and tourism, but it is for sure that Google is a huge player in, in online tourism business and will continue to be so for quite a long time. This is an excellent artic article from this year in, in July in Economist. Reviews on travel websites are rarely honest. And this is something that the users of these review services are not really aware of. And um, mm -hmm. for example, uh, there are different kind of things going on with these review websites. These are really important part of social media information search. But for example, in TripAdvisor, basically anybody can go to the web service and write a review. And there are companies, for example in China, that just offer fake reviews for 10 fake reviews for $5, for five pounds for a hotel or a company. Either good one for you or bad, one for, bad ones for your com uh, competitors. And there are real people such as sitting in front of the computers writing reviews all day. Uh, TripAdvisor, of course, is constantly uh, batting, uh, battling with these fake reviews, but it's not the only one. The same goes through with Amazon and, and uh, quite a lot of other places. And we have become so uh, dependent on these reviews that it's really difficult for us to make a choice if we do not have this kind of review data available for us. Um, I just personally have this uh, experience about um, uh, bad reviews in TripAdvisor or, or dishonest reviews on TripAdvisor when I looked one hotel in, in Hanoi, uh, which had around 600 five-star reviews, 400 uh, four-star reviews, and only like one or two bad reviews. And I was like, okay, this looks like a fantastic hotel which it, it was not. And I was looking at all the other hotels in the region. 
and they had really, really similar kind of review structure. Um, I don't. I think that it's it's um, quite um, common for in in some places to have different kind of reviews. If I would see a hotel here in Finland that has six hundred five star and four hundred uh, four star reviews, I would think that's a fantastic hotel. But that was not the case case there. Um, Subi says that I've noticed that if there is a negative feedback, some loyal customers can start to defend the company. I wonder how common this is. Yes. Uh, we are talking, the term you are looking or thinking about is uh, advocates. You are social media advocates. You are kind of like uh, prophets or missionaries. But I think advocates is a great reason. They are so happy, so loyal customers for you that they defend you if, in case bad comments come. And this is actually starting to be a really, really um, common phenomenon that whenever there is something coming up in social media, there are always two sides, two different opinions about it. There's people defending, um, let's say, uh, someone would say in social media that they are not hiring gays in their company. There will be people against him and there will be people for him. And then this is the thing in social media that uh, you can be really uh, open about your opinions and uh, there's good possibilities to uh, be anonymous, especially in some social media channels. And, and definitely in travel and tourism, there's a huge amount of cases where people have become have started to defend the company and and um, when, when the company has received a bad review or in case uh, for example if someone requires more information from the company writes a post in their Facebook page it can be like five seconds and there's already an answer to this Facebook post but not from the company but one of their customers and it's definitely something that you know you are doing well when you have managed to create that kind of loyalty that people are ready to defend you. But yeah, there's, the review system is so important, so central part of our, uh, our social media business nowadays that we have to be really careful about it. Uh, for example, Hotels.com and uh, Booking.com traditionally have that if you have stayed in that hotel, then you can review it. So you would think that there are not that many honest re uh, dishonest reviews. But, but still, there are cases reported in, in all these different places that there are uh, dishonest reviews. And, and um, as, as a tourism business, tourism entrepreneur, you have to be uh, really careful and, and also examine your own social media presence and reviews quite thoroughly to see what's going on. But as, as I said, all these companies are fighting very strongly against these fake reviews. They have artificial intelligence and algorithms that try to find out which reviews are not honest, which are mass produced, which, are, which use some kind of language that is not natural or something like that. So they're doing, have, having great efforts to make the reviews as trustworthy as possible. But we have to be, especially as travelers, sure that not all of them are. Um, well, this is a good example of what social media manager is doing. You, this gives you an idea. Um, social media manager is also one position that uh, people working for e-tourism in e-business and tourism can work for, especially in larger companies. Um, they uh, publish blog posts, create content, uh, post to social media, reply and retweet, uh, write more content, write more content, write more content, and, and, and review stats for the day, see how their content is doing, and, and, and so on. So it's full day work producing these contents. And, my experience is that it's, it's really difficult if you are not systematic to find time for producing 
content, creating Facebook posts, creating Twitter uh, posts, posting pictures, going somewhere to find pictures. But you can automate quite a lot of this. So basically you can have half a day a week in, during which you just focus on social media and you plan everything you do. There's uh, applications like TweetDeck and all these other uh, social media channel management programs that allow you, even, even Facebook own post manager allows you to plan your posts for the whole week uh, in, in one sitting. So it really helps you to not have to do everything uh, here and there. Okay, but that was a um, really good question uh, of notice from Suvi, that uh, feedback phenomenon. Um, I would uh, like to um, talk, um, I'll show you actually uh, some of the stats in our Facebook page that um, we are doing in, in, for example, in our Center for Tourism Studies. I'm just changing the language to English. Pirate UK US. So, so this is um, our website, almost 500 likes. Uh, we have promoted content, so you can pin a post to the top of the website. It should be something that you regard as important. Uh, when you are managing a website, I'm just going to see here, uh, a social media uh, platform, you get a lot of information about what's going on in your platform. There's the picture I took. 72 people reached... Um, no likes except uh, one of my colleagues. So uh, you can you can uh, um, let's see there. This is so. There are some of my colleagues are also editing and admi administrating this website. So it's good that you can set uh, give your colleagues and many employees write to your website, but then you have to be quite um, certain that they know what they are doing. So, uh, for example, having the rules that you should not post uh, anything to Facebook when you have enjoyed some alcohol, for example, is, is an excellent um, excellent rule and, and so on. So there's been quite a lot of things that, quite a lot of um, cases where one person has managed to basically ruin a brand social media presence by not knowing what he or she is doing or posting his own opinions that do not follow um, company policy to online. But in any case, this is the kind of information that Facebook gives you uh, when you look at what works and what does not. It gives reach, how many people have seen the post. It gives also the engagement ratings that we discussed quite a lot. It shows how many people are uh, clicking it and how many people are uh, reacting, commenting and sharing it. So these are these four Post clicks, reaction, comments, and shares are very important in deciding um, how uh, your content works. And even though uh, there's not that many reactions, comments, or shares in the picture I just sent, 
quite a lot of people, 13, have clicked the picture. So that's at least something, and that's why it's, it's starting to work. When we look at uh, what are the most popular contents in our website, so uh, this post, we have also a blog, uh, www.matkalututkimus.org, which is our blog saying what happens, and, and we published there uh, overview of research we have conducted from regarding Chinese and Japanese and Russian and German tourists, and we uh, created Finnish marketing manuals for these customer groups, and we promoted them in Facebook, and they got uh, 1.8 thousand people saw this, uh, this post with 166 clicks on the link and 83 uh, reactions. So that, that was quite successful. Um, then we had this um, event uh, that we are organizing in, in the travel fair, Nordic Travel Fair 2017, uh, Digital Tourism uh, mini, uh, mini Fair that we promoted a little bit, and this time we promoted it with 7 euros. It was a good post. It reached uh, two, 1,300 people organically. So this is, or you can see these terms, organic and paid. Organic is something that you do not pay for, and paid is something that is, you, you did pay for. And we paid for, for 1,000 people to see our post. And altogether, 162 clicked in it, and then it already looks quite good. But in typi typically, when we look at the numbers, 150, 250, 400, 450, it's not even close that all our followers would see these posts. Mm -hmm. Only really popular posts uh, are being seen by more, more people than our what followers we have. Uh, Sophia here says that she prefers mailing lists to social media, as then I do not feel like I'm missing anything but not paying attention. But some people, organization entrepreneurs, seem to send marketing emails way too often, and then it's only annoying. That's, that's a fantastic comment. You are absolutely right. Email marketing, it's I think it's one of the uh, trifecta uh, marketing tools that we have in our use. And it's been, it's been mishandled by, by quite a many companies that they either send too many mails or send too few mails or send bad emails and so on and do not probably even use decent e uh, mailing software. So maybe we have more time to look into email marketing later on, but I would definitely say that it's underused uh, marketing channel in tourism and misused marketing channel in tourism. Uh, because what we do is we oft, quite often still read our emails. Emails is when I woke up uh, the first thing and, and, and get to work, the first things I re read are my emails and always have a constant update of emails in my mobile phone. So that's definitely an efficient uh, channel to reach customers if you know how to use it. And, and uh, this is also something that Facebook says it's easy to boost posts. So this is basically pay money to reach more people. And it's really easy to just pay this and then your money goes away and your post gets more visibility. Uh, it's really easy way to do marketing. But Facebook also offers um, ad manager for Facebook ads which um, provides a much more detailed information on campaigns you are doing. At this moment we have a campaign going on uh, that promotes our new tourism marketing and masters uh, tourism marketing and management master's degree program. And I can show you how this, for example, is, is working at this moment. Um, let's see if it works. Yeah, it's uh, aimed... When you know who are the customers that you want to target, Facebook offers fantastic tools to reach them. For example, in this case, the advertisement I'm using to get 
uh, people interested to our tourism marketing and management program uh, are, is aimed at Turkey, Thailand, Indonesia, Russia and Vietnam to people aged 20 to 20, 22 to 24, so basically those that should be already finish their master's uh, bachelor's thesis and I've also managed to uh, really uh, detail add really much details on let's see if I could show it here Yeah, uh, but I've managed to uh, direct this only to people who are interested in studying abroad and studying Europe and tur tourism or business studies. So Facebook has fantastic targeting tools that you can only use if you use this ad manager. And not many companies, for example, who do social media marketing know that this kind of ad manager even exists. And, and this is kind of tool that allows you. Here we have two different uh, versions of the advertisement. They have one sentence difference. And we can already see that there are huge differences between uh, cost per click. So <clears throat> this advertisement, uh, the top one, is almost twice as expensive as the one below. Uh, they only have one difference in, in words. The other one talks about interested in tourism, ca interested in career and tourism business. The other one interested in studying tourism. So this kind of small difference, yeah. The career one is cheaper, but the uh, one with uh, tourism studies gets more people. So that's why I'm, I'm running them both. If I wouldn't be in any hurry, you can see that uh, the other one is a lot cheaper and you should focus on that but it's not bringing enough traffic so I have to run with the other one also. So this is just one of the possibilities that when you know who your customers are you can really much focus your marketing and when you can focus your marketing it's really possible to get excellent results really efficient marketing uh, with social media services such as Facebook. And, and, and as you can see, I'm not targeting China at all. There are not that many Chinese users on, on this Facebook. But great, that, this is just one example of how we can use these numbers to evaluate our uh, marketing in, in social media. In this case, especially paid marketing efforts. Uh, if, if I would have a post that would get people to share it that would be um, that would have a sharing trigger that would be even better to to promote but I just haven't had time to really think about what kind of content could be great for for sharing so I'm going with this but you could basically spend as much time and effort uh, in in designing and creating content as as possible and it would probably be a good thing to do Okay, I think that we have gone through uh, quite a lot of things today. What, what do you say, Mushasi? Yeah. <laughs> quite, quite a lot of things. Uh, everything is really much connected to business and tourism business and online business in, in many different ways. Uh, we are continuing today but you've probably had some taste of how big a field this whole thing is and, and what kind of skills and knowledge you have to have. But the internet is good about in, in that it's, it, if you know what you are searching for, then it already makes it much easier for you to look for that information and you can find it. But the, the thing with this kind of topic is, is what are the important topics? What kind of information... I should search for and search for and this this lecture should you at least give give you idea of what is important and what you should focus on and and what you need more information about 
I'm going to end this with this website. This is one of the most beautiful websites I have ever seen. Uh, Tervarumpu.fi, which represents Repoveden National Park of Repovesi. It's such a beautiful... It's basically just video of the national park uh, with small amount of text and you can find more information from the top. But this is, I think this is the direction that our websites are going, especially in travel and tourism. These kind of really simplified, inspirational websites are, are one of the promising directions of uh, online tourism presence and website design. Well, thank you all. Yang Feng also has quite a lot of new knowledge, especially if you are not, if you don't have a lot of background in tourism uh, business or tourism research, then at least this course will be hard work for you. Uh, especially when you are returning the assignments and writing the assignments, it will be much more difficult for those with less background in tourism business, tourism research, tourism studies than for those who already know about what tourism is and how, what tourism, how tourism works and what are tourism services and, and so on. But I do hope that you find enough material to, to return your assignments in, in a successful way. But, but it will not be easy and you will have to work quite hard to make uh, good assignments and good, good essays. But we will continue tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and we're gonna continue with this theme of what we should do and look much more closely into data collection and importance of data and data management and database marketing in, in, in tourism online business so hope to see you all online tomorrow are you coming here tomorrow excellent we meet, we meet again then and uh, that's it for me. If, if you come up with any questions during the night, uh, we can continue with them tomorrow. But if not, we are going to go with the program. So, see you.